All right, so my next speaker, guest speaker is Dave Barnett, has worked in cloud security space for over 10 years. Previously, he was a director of strategy and other technologies leading vendors where he co-authored the PA5555, the first nationally certified cybersecurity standard and collaborated with academia on an important research paper. In Dave's current role, he leads business strategy team for CloudFair's EMA, SESE, and email portfolio security. Please put your hands together and welcome Dave Barnett. Oh, there you go, on button. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Samir, and also thank you very much indeed for your time. I know what you're probably thinking, oh no, an English guy is gonna come over and tell us what to do. Well, I happen to believe that you guys are doing a pretty good job. I mean, your leaders with uh, Vision 2030 are showing a, a form of leadership that we don't have in the UK, as you might imagine. But the good news is, it's not just me at Cloudflare. So under the uh, general management of Bashir Basira, um, who actually uh, runs our uh, Middle East business, who was actually here in 2011, was one of the first speakers at MENA 2011. And he was talking about cloud security when he used to work for Fortinet. So, you know, he's had the vision in advance um, beyond uh, his years. So, what I'd like to do is, is talk to you about changing your mindset around um, internet native architecture. It's not just about digital transformation. I mean, digital transformation initiatives are fairly well known. I mean, you just go and speak to Gartner, right? You know, we're talking about making a better workplace for people, um, taking goods and services to market better, being more innovative, using things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. But technological transformation comes as a result of society's transformation. So I'd like to tell you a little story. So when the Ice Age finished, 11,000 years ago, what did humans do? Humans went out and they hunted, because that's all they really had was hunting, until this little guy came along. This is the Egyptian dung beetle. It was largely due to this little friend that the fertile crescent of the Levant, of what is now Egypt, what was at the time, what well, became Babylonia, because what he does is he takes dirt and he spreads it. And he takes dirt and he digs. And he takes dirt and he spreads it and he digs and he spreads it and he digs. They created a fertile land. And instead of having to go out and hunt for food, what people could do is they could stay at home. The cradle of civilization happened 11,000 years ago in this region. Of course, when people are staying home, they talk to each other, right? They develop language. They develop art. They figure out what's good to eat. I'm not sure the food was great in those days. It's much better now. They also developed technology. 9,000 years ago in Babylonia, they had, they had glass. They had irrigation. This region was the cradle of civilization. And it was, it was because of this little dung beetle that the great wealth and the great civilization happened. Of course, when you create wealth, where do you put it? Well, you centralize around buildings, right? And when you have too much of a certain type of thing, you trade it with somebody else for something else that you need. And then you develop currency. And where do you store the currency? In the buildings. Now, whenever there's good people generating wealth, unfortunately, even 11,000 years ago, there were bad people that wanted that wealth. So what do we do? Well, if you've got natural defenses, you're okay. And this is Mont Saint-Michel in France, right? You need a boat to steal their stuff. But like everybody else, what do we do? We create walls. Now, this is six minutes walk from my house, right? It's the World UNESCO Heritage Site, as you know. They created walls to stop people getting out the stuff inside. And that, that was okay, right? Because, you know, they're big walls. And they actually built several levels of walls um, next to each other because the technology of the, the bad guys got better. But inside there today is the crown jewels, probably the most valuable object in the United Kingdom. And it's protected by these guys, right? This is not, um, this is not a costume. This is their uniform, right? They've got big knives and big guns. And if you try and get those crown jewels, 
They'll shoot you. They have the right to shoot you. But when you're looking at the vision of your leaders, the, what you're trying to create, and I'm suggesting here, is another revolution, another renaissance in the Middle East. And you can't keep all the gold inside the castle when your greatest asset is your people. Now, I love the video for the line, because it's all about people, a better way of uh, living. I've read Vision 2030. It's all about empowering people to do better. The digital artisans of today need their tools to be kept clean, and they need to have their choice of tool. And COVID, we all know, know, about, we all know about choice of tool, right? We all use WhatsApp. We shouldn't really, but we do. So I am very delighted to be here because the... The, the wealth and the innovation and the technology that is going to be generated in this region in the next decade is going to set the world alight. Not just in Saudi, of course. It's all about empowering people. Now, I get inspired by people that have really visionary ideas, and one of those was the late Colin Powell, who sadly is no longer with us. But what he said, and just bear with me just a moment on this, he said, leadership is all about people. It's not about organizations. It's not about strategies. It's all about people motivating people to get the job done. You have to be people-centered. I believe, with the vision of Mohammed bin Salman, Crown Prince, you will achieve it, inshallah. But you know, digital transformation is happening everywhere. You know, at Cloudflare, we built ourselves on digital transformation. 25% of the world's internet is protected by Cloudflare. We have the world's largest global network. All around us are people doing innovation. If you were Barclays, would you have spotted Block? I mean, Block is like an $18 billion payments company. Stripe, another payments company. It's a couple of guys in Ireland, right? It's worth $10 billion. Large organizations these days are not the ones that are going to innovate. The competition that you will have to achieve your goals of uh, dominance or whatever it happens to be technologically, and they're not going to be the uh, competitors you know about right now. They'll be the competitors that are quietly working away on transforming uh, or disrupting businesses. And if you think about it, most of the disruption that's happened in the last, uh, in the last 100 years has happened when there's a global recession, right? Supermarkets. Supermarkets existed before the uh, 1930s in the US, but it was only because people demanded cheaper goods that were prepackaged that supermarkets disrupted and look at the dominant power they have. And then there's COVID, right? You know, COVID was, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a CXO, right? You know, this was digital transformation, you know, because it's going to, you either die or you go home and you work from home, right? I think it was Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, that said after three months of COVID, he said that in three months, they'd seen three years of digital transformation. This was an experiment in how to get stuff done quickly. People's memory is pretty long. People get used to being able to work from wherever they are. People get used to having their choice of tools. When I'm looking for digital transformation, I ask my son, what should I use? And he goes, just use WhatsApp, Dad. You know, why do you waste your time with work tools? But how, do you, how do you provide tools for people like me to do my job when they might not be out in your control. It was easy when everything's in your control, but when it's not, you need to provide alternatives, alternatives that are in your control. So there is a new dawn for a new cradle of civilization. The most important, uh, in my humble opinion, the most important invention we ever had so far was farming, down to the dung beetle. I think the second most important in invention is the internet. We exist as Cloudflare to make the internet safer, faster, more reliable, and more private, to transform your businesses. You need a partner to transform your business with, and that's Cloudflare. So, i tell you a story. So, I was with a CIO of a very large company um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, what he said to me was, was Dave, I've got a, an IT budget of half a billion dollars. I've got 50 things that I need to do on that list, right? And if you stack rank them by cost, yours is number 49. But if you rank them by importance, yours is number two. Because until we secure 
mobile workers, until we secure people accessing cloud applications. And we can't do all the other stuff. We can't do the workplace transformation. We can't do the move to uh, direct to cloud connectivity. We can't do all the other stuff unless we set the foundation right. So you have to be respectful for the past. You have to be uh, a metamorphosis rather than a complete big bang. There are good things about the way we used to work. But there's a great opportunity if we can just get it right, if we can just think of the world as a cloud-native company and, and government, but apply those principles to the challenges we have. It's not a big bang. It's a metamorphosis. So the way we see it, and just the Americans love their animations, the way that we see it is the COVID accelerated transformation and people are starting to remember how nice it is to not have to travel to work. So organizations around the world are offering people the ability to work from home. How do you work from home securely? Well, you could use a VPN, that's not secure. Or you could, maybe there's another way. Customers buying behavior and the way you interact with organizations has massively changed. I remember the day I used to go down the road and, 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 and buy a takeaway food and bring it home with me and it took time. Now all I do is use Deliveroo or use Uber Eats and have it delivered to me. I've got a lot more choice as well. So we need to start thinking about how it is we can um, leverage technology and the emerging uh, technology to our benefit. But how do you secure it? Well, you could buy more hardware, stick more tin in there, you know, put a firewall in every house. <laughs> yeah, you remember that, right? You know, I'm old enough to remember data centers and the mess just trying to figure out the complexity that's caused by stacking more hardware. Uh, what you could do, I suppose, is you could shift that complexity to the cloud. You could buy lots of different cloud providers' technology and try and stitch it together. Maybe you could outsource it to a company that can do it for you. You can't outsource the risk. You can't outsource the fact that everything, the network's gone down. You're just moving the complexity to the cloud. Now, I'm not saying don't use Microsoft. I'm not saying don't use AWS. But I'm saying perhaps there's a better way. So step one I would take is, is what, what Tom Soderstrom uh, did. He, he was the NASA Jet, Jet Propulsion Laboratory CTO in 2005. And he made a symbolic step. He decided to change the name of his IT department, his information technology department, to Innovating Together. He took a collaborative approach. And it was that one small step that made the rest of the business realize that IT and the business are inextricably linked together. Try putting a satellite in space without working with the IT department. So you could work with a partner. So many of you probably don't know who Cloudflare is, so if you'd excuse me just to let you know, we, we operate the world's largest uh, cloud network. Our aim is to be within the fraction of the blink of an eye of every living person on Earth who have access to the internet. 90% of what we do is free. We're trying to make the internet a better, safer place for everybody. But what we do is we, we run every single service that we have, and we have over 30 different services. Some non-security, but mostly round security, based on security, run them everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what application you're choosing to use, it doesn't matter what place and what location, what device, we want to make sure you have a consistent level of security wherever you might be. We have a cloud-native approach. We are incredibly innovative. Last year, we shipped 530 major product upgrades. So, Cloud transformation architecture. Um, before, complex, maybe owned by yourself, maybe outsourced, using things like VPNs. You know VPNs were invented the same year that DVD players were invented. Anybody still use DVDs? I mean, Netflix is pretty cool, right? D VPNs, are ne I, I don't know anybody who says they love their VPN. The problem is, of course, once you're in, you're in. It's not good security. It's connectivity. 
So what we would suggest is you look at um, the advice that Gartner gave. Gartner defined a term, it was Neil MacDonald at Gartner defined a term, SASE. Define it in 2019. Secure Access Service Edge. A combination of networking and network security in one service. Doesn't matter who's consuming and who's delivering. It could be an Internet of Things device connecting to a data center. It could be a person connecting to a cloud application. One simplified solution. One control panel. So you'll have a lot of initiatives, right? To achieve um, your goals in 2030, you'll have a lot of things that are not really IT related. They'll be around making people's lives better and making services more accessible and more transparent, cheaper, getting into markets that are beyond your shores. And underneath that, there'll be a lot of security things that you need to do to support it. Zero trust network access, maybe a bit more VPNs, some cloud access security, but load of stuff, right? So instead of doing best of breed, get bits and pieces from here and there and try and stitch them together, our approach and our design decision has been having one service that does it all. Very simple. With, at the core, zero trust. Zero trust, I mean, I, I, I love the way that Samir uh, talked about the network uh, going down right at the start today. Because it was um, the Jericho Forum, a British uh, industry forum in 2000 that uh, came out with a paper around deprimatization. And it was Forrester that took that and created the term zero trust. Never trust, always verify. Identity, right? We're going to talk a little bit about identity in a second. But identity, as, as the previous speaker um, made a really good point, is it, that's what people want. They want to steal your identity. When they steal your identity, they get what you've got. My, my, uh, my wife got her email hacked the other day. <laughs> like, you know, the stress of having your identity hacked. What, what is tied into your email? What could you get if you steal someone's email? Anyway, identity. So why not have one single vo uh, aggregator of uh, zero trust that's based around whatever identity provider you choose to use? So we want to partner with you. We want to be your innovating together department. We are a cloud service that is pre-built for digital transformation. Everything you need, be it compute, storage, networking, zero trust, anti-threat mitigate, everything is private and it's within reach of every human in the world. We're here for you. We will bring you your innovating together department. I do want to call out one thing though, because there is one service that we do not host. It was an acquisition that we made recently. There is a threat that I need to tell you about that I'm just going to finish off with. But I have to apologize, because I've been in this industry for 26 years. We failed you. The security industry in general has failed you. By the numbers, what we're providing, what the industry is providing for you, is not meeting your needs. So, on the left, there's the Cyber Edge 2022 report. And I would urge you to download this report. It's free of charge. What they did is they interviewed 1,200 CISOs globally. And they asked a lot of questions, but one question was very simple. The question was, have you been compromised last year? And the answer was yes. Between 70 and 90% of customers that were asked, CISOs that were asked, said yes, they had been compromised. I don't know about you, but if I live in a neighborhood where 90 or 70% of my neighbors were successfully broken into last year, I wouldn't be questioning their choice of lock. I would be questioning locks altogether. Locks aren't working anymore. They failed you. Now, why could they have failed you? Well, if you look at the Verizon Data Beach Investigations Report, they reflect what society has seen in that social engineering attacks against identity has gone through the roof. And the reason it is is because of COVID, right? Because we're living our lives online now. Yeah, we, we're putting everything out there. It's one of the reasons. So according to Deloitte, attacks on identity, phishing emails, Email was 91% of the choice. There's a few other slight ones like LinkedIn and instant messaging and stuff like that. But 91%, according to Deloitte, of attack vector was email. But email is the number one way that we communicate, right? So we acquired Area 1 security, which takes a completely different approach. We, we, we don't look at what the others look at. We scan the entire internet, all 8 
billion things. We're looking for infrastructure that an attacker would use against you. We're using advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning to detect whether that email that comes in that no one's ever seen before might not even have a link if it's malicious or not. So my, my offer to you is, if you wish, we will give you a free phishing risk assessment. Give me 10,000 emails through my system and I will find stuff that no one else has found. But prepare your budgets because over 70% of the time when people care about this problem and they trial us, they end up buying us because it's so good. We do respect your privacy. We know privacy is very important everywhere in the world, but also more so here. So we, we offer um, services that are there to protect your data, uh, but also we hold ourselves to a very high standard as well. S separate to this is Fed FedRAMP, which is, we're going through uh, right now. We are local to you guys. Uh, we have three data centers. Well, actually, we have, I believe, quite a lot more data centers, but in the same location. I think there's seven or nine co-located in Jeddah, in Riyadh, and um, forgive me, the, there's another one as well. I'm t not familiar with the geography. There is one more thing, though. Um, the title of this talk is, is a um, digital internet native transformation. So I hope the thought leadership side has, has been of interest to you. But as Nelson Mandela said, you know, the road is, is long. And when you're on a long road, it's a good idea to have a map. So on our stand, we have a roadmap to zero trust architecture. It's here for you in hard copy. I actually had them printed. I just had to bring these over from London. My bags were heavy. But this is for you, either on soft copy or hard copy. It's on our stand. And also here is the reference architecture, taking the, the, some of the use cases that um, are common around the world for digital transformation and making it really, really simple. So with that, I'll be on the stand and uh, the team as well. So if you have any questions, please do come and see us. But thank you very much indeed for your time.